What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I wanted to jump in and take a look at some of the best scout rifles in Destiny 2 that you can use in PvE and PvP stuff. So I wanted to go into a little bit of depth with some of these scout rifles here, but I'll also kind of shout out a couple of honourable mentions as well. Obviously, these aren't all of the scout rifles in the game. Most scout rifles in Destiny 2 are pretty good, so be sure to let me know which scout rifles you like in the comment section below. So the first scout rifle I wanted to take a look at is the Tone Patrol, which is a Soros scout rifle. It's a precision frame weapon, so the weapon's recoil pattern is more predictably vertical. We have SLO 10 post sights, as well as SPO 57 front, which looks like that, and then the longer range one, which is SRO 37 ocular. I just like the SLO 10 post, personally. We have high caliber rounds. Shots from the weapon knock the target back farther. We also have flared magwell, optimized for fast reloading, which increases stability and reload speed. And then also dragonfly. Precision kills create an elemental damage explosion. So Dragonfly is essentially the equivalent of Firefly from Destiny 1. I'll talk about that in a moment. This is a 180 rounds per minute scout rifle, so it sits in the same archetype as Nameless Midnight, Call to Serve, and a bunch of the other scouts. This is kind of the key archetype for scout rifles. And this is a really decent scout rifle in PvE stuff. High caliber rounds is definitely beneficial, helps to kind of keep enemies staggered a little bit. Of course, you do have the option of Flared Magwell as well if you want to bump up stability and reload speed. But personally, Personally, I think high caliber rounds is really valuable on this scout rifle. Dragonfly is a nice bonus having the kind of elemental damage explosion. It's not as powerful as it was back in Destiny 1. The Firefly explosion in the first game was much bigger and did more damage to targets around the target that you actually killed. But Dragonfly is certainly beneficial when enemies are kind of grouped up. Of course, this is an energy weapon as well. Inside of the Crucible, this is also a very, very good scout rifle. High caliber rounds, again, is really beneficial. This thing can with things like Mida Multitool about as well as anything can. But there's another scout rifle which is very, very similar, just with different bonuses and slightly different stats. So the Tango 45 scout rifle right here, also a precision frame weapon. We essentially have the same weapon sights here, but we have different bonuses. So alloy magazine, faster reloads when the mag is empty. Steady rounds, the magazine is optimized for recoil control, which increases stability, but slightly decreases range. And finally, we have triple tap, rapidly landing precision hits will return one one round to the magazine from reserves. Like I said, Tone Patrol and Tango 45 are essentially the same scout rifle, but Tango 45 does actually have better handling and higher stability. And considering the Dragonfly bonus isn't really going to help you in PvP that much, this does have triple tap. So if you're kind of firing at targets from a long distance and hitting all of those crits, you will be getting rounds back into the magazine. Either way, both of these are scouts that you should look out for. They are very, very good. To take a quick look at another energy weapon right here, we have the Mananan. I don't know how you say that. SR4, which is an Omalon scout rifle. This is a lightweight frame weapon, superb handling, move faster with the weapon when equipped. We have Candle PS as well as Impulse MS3, which is the longer range scope. We've got Alloy Magazine, faster reloads when the mag is empty. Steady rounds, the magazine is optimized for recoil control, which greatly increases stability and decreases range once again. And we also have Explosive Payload. Projectiles create an area of effect detonation on impact. Interestingly, this one is actually in the same archetype as the minor multi-tool essentially. So it's the 200 rounds per minute style of weapon. It's got decent stability if you go with steady rounds. It's got pretty good handling. But this is a great energy weapon option that comes with explosive payload right here. It's going to take down shields very, very quickly because on top of the fact that it's an energy weapon, explosive payload or explosive rounds, just like in Destiny 1, do actually deal more damage to kind of shielded targets. But this is just a great kind of crowd control weapon. Firing this into a bunch of adds, you know, you'll take them down fairly quickly. Explosive payload does increase your damage across the board for this weapon. So where Tone Patrol kind of gives you the energy weapon with Firefly, this one essentially is the equivalent, but with explosive rounds, you can still do some work in the Crucible, but honestly, I think this is a better PvE weapon. Let's look at a kinetic scout rifle. So Nameless Midnight, very, very good and very popular scout rifle. It's a precision frame weapon. We have Red Dot 2 MOA, Red Dot 
Micro and Rifle Scope SSF. We have Flared Magwell for fast reloading or steady rounds for optimized recoil control. And then again, Explosive Payload. Projectiles create an area of effect destination on impact. I use this in PVE stuff mostly, so I'm going with Flared Magwell to get those reload speeds up. You can use this thing in the Crucible and it's actually very, very good. Uh, you probably be better going with steady rounds for the Crucible. But for a legendary kinetic scout rifle, this is absolutely in the top couple of weapons in the game. Again, if you're using it in PvE stuff, you're going to do a bunch of damage. Those explosive rounds will increase damage and also help with crowd control a little bit. I mentioned before that explosive rounds also deal more damage to energy shields, and this is still the case in Destiny 2. So with Nameless Midnight or any other explosive rounds kinetic weapon, you will take down shields much quicker than with any other type of kinetic weapon. So that definitely works to its benefit, not that you're kind of specifically aiming to do that most of the time, but if you're out of ammo or things like that, it can be pretty useful. Inside of the Crucible, Nameless Midnight is a very, very accurate weapon. At longer ranges, it's really competitive as well. You can easily outrange the Minor Multi-Tool if you pick your engagements well. So really, wherever you use Nameless Midnight, it's going to be a very good scout rifle. Another kinetic scout that automatically gets on the list would be the call to serve. So this is a precision frame weapon again. We've got IS-5 circle, model 8 red, and then finally Mark 15 lens, which is a very long range lens. We have extended mag. The weapon has a greatly increased magazine size, but reloads slower. Appended mag, which increases your magazine size. And then finally triple tap, rapidly landing precision hits will return one round to the magazine. It's another 180 round per minute weapon. So it's in the same archetype as Nameless Midnight. The thing that stands out about this scout rifle though is just how precise the weapon is. It doesn't have the highest stability stat and it does have a bit of a kick, but as you land kind of rounds into targets, it just feels really accurate. It does fantastic damage. I feel like this scout rifle is generally better at longer ranges. Nameless Midnight kind of handles a little bit better up close, whereas this thing feels like it's supposed to be a really long range scout rifle. But if you keep hitting your headshots, you can just keep firing, keep taking down more enemies. If you're using your primary weapon, for a bit of DPS as well, obviously this thing is really solid. And because of how precise it is, you know, you just keep landing crits on bosses, whatever it is, and you'll be getting rounds back to the magazine. In the Crucible, it's a decent scout rifle for sure. Again, a very long range weapon. You'll be able to outrange minor multi-tools and a lot of the other weapons that people are using if you position yourself well. It's not the kind of weapon you want to be, you know, up close and personal with, but if you get used to how it feels and the kind of ranges you need to be at with the weapon, you will do some serious damage and play will be surprised at ranges, you know, how quickly you actually take them out. Naturally, up next, it's gonna have to be the Mida multi-tool. Like it or hate it, this weapon is just dominating in the Crucible right now. Trials of the Nine, man, like every single game, every single player on the team seems to have a Mida multi-tool. So of course, the weapon boosts your movement speed. We've got corkscrew rifling for a balanced barrel of increased range and stability and increased handling speed. It has high caliber rounds, and this is something they actually took off the weapon in Destiny 1 because it was too effective the amount of screen shake and kind of flinch that it caused, but it appears to be back in Destiny 2, and it's definitely part of the reason this scout rifle is so good. We've got Mida Radar. Your radar stays active while aiming down sights. That's another reason that this thing is very good right now. We also have Handlade Stock, optimized for recoil control with increased stability. In PvE stuff, it's just a decent scout rifle. It's not my favorite kind of class. This is a 200 round per minute weapon, so it is a little bit lower impact, but you fire more rounds out of the magazine. I personally would prefer to use Nameless Midnight on something in PvE stuff basically all of the time. In the Crucible though, it's very, very good. Basically for all of the reasons that it was good in Destiny 1. It kind of feels very lightweight to actually use. You have this increased movement speed, so you can kind of strafe, which makes it much harder for enemies to actually hit you. The recoil pattern of the weapon makes it quite easy to use as well. It kind of bounces back to where you first fired the shot. So for a weapon with this kind of rate of fire, it has a very natural and easy to manage recoil pattern. High caliber rounds definitely makes this weapon more obnoxious. In the Crucible, you know, it causes way more screen flinch. The first person to get the shot a lot of the times is going to win in an engagement. And it's not purely because they're landing all of their shots. You know, it's about that flinch value. I've said this before, but flinch feels like it's a very big factor inside of the PvP in this game. But a huge one here is Mida's ability to keep your radar active when you aim down sights. Radar is obviously 
really important in The Crucible, and it's very influential in Destiny 2, but it's a little bit more difficult to read in some respects. It's much less immediate, and a big part of this is that when you ADS with weapons, your radar vanishes, and it takes much longer in Destiny 2 to actually come back up. So as you switch in and out, you know, you're losing a lot of kind of radar information, and the MIDA just completely eliminates that problem while you have your primary weapon equipped. There's also the simple fact that for people who played Destiny 1, this is a weapon that they already know how to use, you know? It's something familiar, it essentially does what it did in Destiny 1. Right now, this thing destroys in the Crucible, and like I said before, whether you like it or not, it's simply the way that it's working right now. I don't know whether Bungie are likely to change things. Like I said, you know, playing Trials, literally every player had this weapon on, but I'm just stating the facts, I don't want to kind of get into a complicated argument about what should happen with the MIDA multi-tool. You guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So those are the kind of core scout rifles I wanted to take a quick look at. A couple of quick shout outs though, the 765 scout rifle from Omelon is a pretty nice weapon. This one has a full auto trigger system, so it fires in full auto. It is a lightweight frame weapon. You've got the Torch HS3 as well as the Jolt PS scopes right there. Accurized rounds so it can fire longer distances. Armor piercing rounds which cause extra damage to combatant shields and over penetrate targets. All around a pretty good scout rifle. I'm not the biggest fan of full auto scout rifles, but if you are a fan of these things, this one is definitely one to look out for. Another full auto scout would be the Conspirator from the Raid, a lightweight frame weapon once again, coming with full auto trigger system, ambitious assassin, and then finally Firefly. I mean, Dragonfly. Man, I can't get used to these updated names. And this one's a 200 rounds per minute weapon, as well as being full auto, so it's pretty cool. I don't feel like these are as influential as the other weapons I spoke about, but they're not throwaway weapons either. So there we go, guys. Those are my top scout rifles for any activity in Destiny 2. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Any favorite weapons of yours? I always enjoy reading your comments. If you have enjoyed this video, though, a like is very much appreciated. My friend Holotide is actually doing a giveaway with me for a Confluence of Light emblem. This is the kind of Gamescom Destiny 2 emblem. If you want a chance to win that, check out the giveaway in the description below. You can follow us on Twitter and subscribe on YouTube to get more entries. For now, though, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video as always, and I'll catch you very soon.